Hey, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to check the network state in your Ionic 2 Android and iOS mobile application. Uh, so if you've been keeping up with my tutorials, uh, and it's alright if you haven't, you'll know that I've done this same tutorial with Ionic Framework version 1, uh, but that one is becoming uh, more obsolete every day. So I figured it'd be time to do a refresher since this tutorial is quite popular in Ionic Framework version 2. Uh, which actually uses Angular JS 2 instead of Angular JS 1. Uh, so there are some slight differences, but for the most part, uh, I mean, we're going to be using the same Apache Cordova plugin. Uh, there's just some minor setup changes, um, but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too difficult. And I mean, the benefit of this is you can do checks to see if your internet is available and if it's not uh, act appropriately, uh, which is often often a necessity in modern applications because most modern applications do use the internet in some fashion or maybe they need to be on a network. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, I'm hoping that this tutorial uh, helps you along in figuring out what's best for you. And I definitely don't cover everything inside of the uh, Apache Cordova network plugin. Uh, I'd probably cover half of it. Uh, there, It's definitely worth checking out the documentation afterwards. Uh, to see what I might have missed that could possibly benefit you in your development adventure. With that said, let's go ahead and create a new project on our desktop. Uh, let's go ahead and say Ionic start example project blank hyphen hyphen v2. So before I hit enter, uh, I want to make something clear. You have to be using the Ionic CLI that supports Ionic 2 applications. If you are using the incorrect CLI, uh, this hyphen hyphen v2 flag will not work uh, and you won't be able to build an Ionic 2 application. So if you are unsure, go ahead and head over to the Ionic framework documentation uh, and check to see the uh, getting started installation guide uh, for getting the correct CLI version. But if you do have the correct version, go ahead and hit enter here. Perfect. It's now installed on our desktop here, uh, right here. Uh, now let's go ahead and navigate into it. Now we're going to add two build platforms. So we're going to say Ionic platform add Android. And then we're going to say Ionic platform add iOS. But before I hit enter here, uh, it's important to note that if you're not using a Mac computer, this command will not be effective for you. You can only build iOS applications using a Mac. If you're not using a Mac, uh, you're out of luck. You have to stick strictly to Android for Linux and Windows. But if you're using a Mac like I am, go ahead and hit enter. And we're good to go on the platform perspective. The final thing to do before we start coding is to actually include the plugin that we're going to use throughout our application. So we can do that by saying Cordova plugin add Cordova hyphen plugin hyphen network hyphen information and hit enter. And it went ahead and installed that plugin for both Android and iOS being the two platforms that we added. All right, I'm going to clear this. And now it's time we can actually open our project. So it's in the www folder. So go ahead and you can open up everything inside that folder. Uh, but we're gonna go. We're not gonna be messing around with index.html. What we want is home.js and home.html in this blank template. So starting with home.js, we're gonna add two things at the top here. We're gonna add platform, and we're gonna add pop-up. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm going to explain what each of these does in just a second. Drop down into your home page constructor. I'm going to say platform colon uh, platform and pop up colon pop up. So we're, we're really just injecting these into uh, our class here. We're going to say this dot platform equals platform. This dot pop up equals pop up. And now they are both ready to be used. So I'm going to explain each one of them now in this new function that we're going to create, this new function being called uh, check network. 
the first thing that we want to do, because this, this plugin uses native code to check for the network status, we need to make sure that the application is ready to use native code. Uh, that's where the platform comes in. So if you're coming from an Ionic Framework 1 background, you might be familiar with Ionic Platform Ready. Um, or if you're not, you might be familiar with the Apache Cordova on Device Ready. And both of these essentially do the same thing. Uh, they check to make sure your device is ready to use native code. Uh, so that way you don't get errors when you try to use native code. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we're going to say this.platform.ready. Then. And now inside of here, we know that we're ready and we could use this native code. So we're going to say bar network state equals navigator dot connection dot type and a uh, little forewarning here uh, most of what you see I've actually copied directly from the network information uh, plugin documentation page so it's I'm really not doing anything too special here uh, I'm going to say var states equals uh, this blank object now I'm going to just kind of create my own little map here. So I'm going to say state uh, connection dot unknown equals unknown connection. I'm going to uh, let's go ahead and copy this a couple times. So we're going to worry about uh, connection ether Ethernet. We're going to worry about Wi-Fi cell 2G, cell 3G, cell 4G, just normal cell, and then none. Uh, let's go ahead and, and fix these up. So we're going to say Ethernet, Wi-Fi, cell 2G. I know it's just basic stuff here. Um, Believe me, you should probably copy and paste it if you're trying to do the same thing. But I'm typing it so that way you get an idea of what's going on. Cell 4G, cell generic, and then no network connection. All right, so we have our little map created, and we're going to make use of that map right here in this pop-up. So. Again, now I'm going to tell you where this pop-up comes in from. This comes from the Ionic Framework documentation. Uh, it's just going to be an alert. So this pop-up.alert. We're going to give it a title. Let's say connection status. The template is going to be states. And then we're going to type in what we found up at the top here. Network state. So whatever, whatever this line up here. Uh, ends up to be it's going to be thrown into this map and then the appropriate uh, value is going to be shown instead. I don't know why I did a semicolon. Remove that semicolon because that'll just cause errors. We're going to choose CSS class my alert. Perfect. Now down here we can say then, although this truly isn't required, it's just what happens after you click close. Uh, we're just going to say console.log alert closed. But you don't need to include that at all if you don't want to. All right, I just hit save. Uh, now the, uh, the moment of, of truth here is does this work? So go ahead and go back to your terminal. Um, before we build it, I do have to state that uh, there, at the time of making this video, there is a bug in Ionic 2. I've reported it, and it has been acknowledged by the Ionic Framework guys that they will introduce this fix in, a, in an upcoming release. If for some reason that fix hasn't been included, you're going to have to do it manually. Uh, so what, what happens is when you do a build, it doesn't uh, compile the SAS and fonts, uh, which would leave your application looking unstyled and uh, not so pleasant to look at. Um, if you do a build and it does look pleasant, then you know that that fix was already introduced. So it's not too big a deal. It's not too much out of our way to uh, compile this ourselves. 
but what you want to do is you want to install Gulp with NPM. So you would install it the same way that you installed Ionic or Apache Cordova or anything like that. With it installed, you can say Gulp SAS and then Gulp Fonts. And that's it. Uh, when, this, when this bug is fixed, uh, it, it's very possible it was already fixed. Um, it de just depends on when you've decided to watch this video. Uh, but let's say that it wasn't fixed. Um, now we can say Ionic Build Android. Perfect, it's now built. Now we can install it. So adb install r platforms android build outputs apk android debug dot apk. Open up that simulator I have in the background. It's right here. So I'm going to open it. And nothing happened uh, because we forgot to actually change the front end. So now would be a good idea to change that front end. So go to home.html. We're going to erase this card information uh, and we're going to swap it out with a uh, button. And then when it's clicked, it's going to execute the check network function. So check network. All right, let's go ahead and try to uh, build it again. So as far as the gulp commands go, you should only have to run that when you change the CSS or fonts. So I didn't change that, so we shouldn't have to run it again. All right, I uh, built it again. Now I'm going to install it again. Go back to our simulator. Going to open it. We have our button. So fingers crossed that this works. Click the check network. And it says I have a Wi-Fi connection, uh, which is actually accurate because this is a simulator and I'm using Wi-Fi on my laptop. And Jenny Motion, the simulator that I'm using, knows this. So it looks like all is good. Uh, everything worked as it was supposed to be. We were able to determine the network state using the network information Apache Cordova plugin in Ionic 2.